Welcome to Weather Extra on CBS News Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagen. Every week we're taking a closer look at a weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weather casts on KPIX. This week I want to focus on renewable energy, where and when the most wind and solar energy was produced in 2021, and how much progress we're making towards U.S. energy goals. As the largest source of heat-trapping emissions, the energy sector, that includes electricity, heat, and transportation, it's key to addressing climate change. Achieving the global goal of limiting warming to 2 degrees Celsius and pursuing a safer 1.5 degrees Celsius limit requires cutting global emissions in half by 2030 and reaching net zero by 2050. And this, in turn, means a rapid shift towards renewable energy. To reach the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal, renewables would need to generate almost 90% of global electricity by 2050, according to the International Energy Agency. Now, before we get too deep into the details, some terms that you'll need to know. We talk about electricity generation in megawatt hours. One megawatt hour equals 1,000 kilowatt hours. 1,000 megawatt hours equals one gigawatt hours. If all that makes your head spin, let me put it a simpler way. For reference, the average American household consumes 10.7 megawatt hours of electricity each year. According to Climate Central, the lower 48 of the U.S. generated 606,000 gigawatt hours of electricity from wind and solar combined, which accounts for about 16 percent of all electricity consumed in 2021. Wind power accounted for 73 percent of the renewable total. Solar produced the remaining 27 percent. Wind energy production is highest during the spring and fall when the seasons are rapidly shifting and air masses are on the move. The peak day for national wind electricity generation last year, it was 1,750 gigawatt hours, was in late autumn on December 12th. Solar energy production is highest in the summer and it's easy to figure out why. Daylight hours are long and the sun's rays strike the U.S. more directly. The peak day for solar electricity generation was 619 gigawatt hours. That was back on July 22nd. California was among the top five states in producing both wind and solar power. Only Texas can say the same. In order, Texas, Iowa, Oklahoma, Kansas, and California generated the most wind energy in 2021. Texas generated 113,000 gigawatt hours from wind power in 2021, about a quarter of the country's total wind energy. And that's about three times more wind energy than the second place state, which was Iowa. Wind farms require lots of land, so large states like Texas and California have an advantage. Accounting for state size, Iowa, Oklahoma, Texas, Illinois, and Kansas generated the most wind energy per square mile. Here in California, the top county for wind energy production was Kern County at the southern end of the Central Valley. Turning to solar, California, Texas, Florida, Arizona, and North Carolina generated the most solar energy in 2021. California produced about a third of the country's total solar energy, an estimated 55,000 gigawatt hours of solar power just last year. That's over three times as much solar energy than the second place state of Texas. The top county in California for solar energy production was, once again, Kern County. So why is all this important? Let's return again to that goal of net zero emissions by 2050. For that to happen, the Net Zero America Project estimates that the U.S. would need to generate 2.2 million gigawatt hours of solar and wind energy annually by 2030. That's about three and a half times the total amount we produced in 2021. Wind and solar production would need to increase nearly twice as fast as in recent years to keep U.S. energy goals on track. And of course, there are other things that would have to happen as well, like an expansion of the number of electric vehicles in use and the dramatic reduction of the number of gasoline-powered vehicles. Having 16 percent of the country's energy consumption provided by renewable sources is a great step, but we're far from finished with this particular race. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, just email it to weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.